a special guest. Uh, her name is Ashwini Ganapati Bhatt. Uh, she is certainly an inspiring uh, women ultra endurance runner. Uh, very few long distance uh, ultra endurance runners are there in India. Uh, we are blessed to have Ashwini uh, with us today. She has been having an interesting last five years, if I'm precise. She has done about 80 plus uh, endurance running events, including uh, the short versions of uh, running that we're all familiar with, uh, with to the ultra endurance runs. I've seen her in Malnad Ultra last, and I don't know if she has done anything longer than that. Uh, yeah, but the, uh, there are also some impressive records that she has set. And uh, she is probably one of the first person who I know personally who finds a name in Wikipedia for holding a national record for running uh, some insane amount of kilometers inside a stadium. It's pretty interesting to know her credentials. Uh, rather than me talking about it, I thought I will bring her on board and also have a free will conversation with her. This, this community is very small and we strike a relationship. Uh, it's like two people having a common habit, right? So we all come together, we strike a conversation. So there is a friendship that is going on. I'm sure this friendship is what has brought us here into this place. And I'm sure this friendship will take us uh, in, into the future also. Here we are, Ashwini. Ashwini, tell us about you, you know, anything that we don't know about you as a person. Let's start with that question. <laughs> First of all, uh, I'm really privileged to uh, be on this call, uh, Karnan sir. So for everybody uh, who's on the call, um, I've heard this ample number of times from Karnan sir that I should not be using the term sir. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, it's not about uh, age or anything, but it's the respect that I have for. So as he said, um, uh, it's it's very incidental that my ultra running journey started with an event which Kanan sir had organized. It was my first 50k in 2018, ah, February. Nice. So we had um, uh, driven together. So that was the first time I actually happened to meet Kanan sir. So it was my husband, Kanan sir, and another lady. Uh, so four of us, we drove to... Um, air card and then we did the event and then drove back. So. Uh, my uh, friendship with Kanan sir has been over two years now. But uh, before that, I had seen him firsthand at, uh, I don't think I had discussed this with him, at Bengaluru Marathon. Hey, uh, hold on, hold on. This interview is all about Ashwini, but okay. No, no, so no. So I just want to I just tell that. So it was uh, 2000, <laughs> which was the year I did the half. So it was 2015. And there was an incident of someone who had collapsed and had been hit on the road or some, something of that sort. And Kanan sir had actually gone and uh, done a CPR, taken him to the hospital. That was the first time that Bengaluru Marathon had a, a single loop 42. And I saw that he came and he had he was distributing these cards about CPR. So I was intrigued as to who is this guy who's not worried about his own timing and doing something for somebody else. That's my first interaction or that I heard about him. Uh, so coming back to myself, yeah. So I started running as uh, uh, so I said 2015 December. Uh, I was in IT. Um, I was a project manager. I worked for nine years and. Uh, I think many of you can relate uh, the the monotony of the work and uh, how stressful it was it got to me and I was very lucky to have the support from my family uh, to take a call that I don't want to continue in IT anymore. So I quit my job four years ago, December, uh, February 2016 is when I decided to quit my job and um, so I had started running a year before that. So it was just the 10K events. The Midnight Marathon 10K was my first event. Uh, it was sponsored by the company. That's how it started. Uh, so our company CEO just put us together and he said that, okay, we, we need 30 people. And I was put as the head of the task force to just get 30 of them. And then uh, we just did some kind of training. So training, I would not say training as such. We were just motivating each other to run something. So we had no structured training with workouts or none of that. So even if you did two kilometers a week, that was like a big victory back then. So I think uh, I did start off exactly like most of you or how any newbie runner would. So I would just run. So the first year was just 10K and 
uh, incidentally, I got hooked. And uh, the first year itself, I had, I think, done 15, 10K events. So wherever there was an event, I would just sign up and just be there. Um, so it was like, it was a fascinating thing. Uh, being able to run 10 kilometers itself at that point because it's something that I had never imagined that I would run. Just to give a background, uh, um, I was very much active in sports. So I've, I I would not say that I come from a totally uh, no sports background. Um, so my dad was always very encouraging about my uh, outdoor activities. So he would always tell me that whatever you want to do. So I was I was in the state level uh, hockey trials team when I was in school, in high school. And then uh, even until my engineering days, the first year of my engineering, I was very active. So going on field and track. So I was a discus um, throw player. So I used to do that. Uh, there was no fixed thing that you could do this and you, this was not possible. Because, you know, uh, when you have 100 people and only two of them who are interested in sports, you're allowed to do everything. So I was kind of, I would say, a, a jack of all and master of none kind of uh, girl. And uh, after that, uh, yeah, life got on and uh, I completed, I graduated, did my engineering, got into uh, IT. So it never occurred that being healthy or uh, being active was uh, was supposed to be life as well. So it was, I think, uh, growing up, you're all told that you study. Until then, you have your freedom, whatever you want to do. After that, you're accountable, you're responsible. So you need to earn, make a living. And then as a girl, you're like, you get married and then you settle. So that's how it started. Uh, so 2014 was the time that that 10K came along. And then it just opened a whole new world for me. Uh, it was just freedom. I just felt that way when I did my first 10K. And I couldn't believe it. It was, um, it was not about the timing or anything, but it was just uh, such a surprising thing that I could run 10 kilometers. Because when you even tell, yeah. even at this point, when you tell people that even 10 kilometer distance, if you do as a training run and you come back and you have people like any friends or someone who's come home and you say, I did a 10K, they're like surprised, really? You can do 10 kilometers? So that was the thing. That's how I got started. Something common between us, uh, 2016 is when you quit your uh, job. And uh, the same year, uh, I had this brainwave of leaving my job. And at, at the same time, you're from the project management background. You know, I was also from the project management background. I'm sure there's some craziness going around with the project managers. I don't know how many more project managers are there in the group. So guys, if you're having any intention to do something else, blame the project management profession. Okay. <laughs> it's an easy way to blame. <laughs> it's an easy way to blame. Okay. All right. Now, uh, it's pretty interesting to know that, uh, uh, you know, somebody who started um, doing 10Ks, like 10 events in a year, uh, what, what prompted you to scale up, you know, jump to the full marathons? And when, when was the first time you ran your full marathon? Um. Uh, I would say, see, uh, social media has a huge influence on, on most of our lives. Uh, so I was in that wave at that point. I think for the first two, two and a half years, I, I used to post all my runs, none of the training, but as such events. So you go, you post your medal and your timing and all that. And uh, at that point, it was more about proving. So then, then we get wiser, right? We get wiser yeah. after? Or, okay. And after that, you just feel, okay, I mean, I think, uh, at least with me, I got very self-critical about, okay, uh, when I realized that there was more potential and I could do better, and uh, events or results didn't matter to me if it didn't meet my own expectations. So that's when I just stopped posting about timing. So I think it was my first full. After that, I have like refrained from posting anything about timing because uh, by then I started realizing that it doesn't really matter as long as you're happy and so but uh, honestly uh, that's how i started so i did 10k um, i think i'd done like 15 10ks in eight months kind of period uh, and then i i was very 
so I'm from this uh, small town called Sagar in Karnataka, which has the Jog Falls, if you've been here. If not, so I'm uh, born and brought up in Bangalore, but that's a native. And culturally, our background is also uh, something where we're in the midst of nature. Uh, so if, even when as kids, we used to go back to our hometown, uh, we used to, we didn't have toilets at that time. Uh, like 20 years ago. So we had to go to the woods and finish our job and come back with the lota. If, if people have grown up in villages, you know that. So um, nature was something that really appealed to me. So after I did the 10Ks, it was all city events, all in Bangalore, and I never ventured out. And then I heard about uh, trail running. So I saw a post on uh, Facebook about the Chennai Trail Marathon. Um, which does events in the train. So then I started looking up like running itself was new to me, like even the 10K distance. So then I looked up as to what is a trail run. Then I saw that it was not on road and you would be running with paddy fields around or any kind of in nature. There's, and it's not tar road. I think by then I had started. So I have always been a person who likes variety. Um, that's how... I decided that, okay, I want to do my first half as a trail instead of road. So I traveled. That was my first travel on my own. I traveled to Chennai, took a train from here, went solo, and then did that half marathon. Uh, so after the 10K, as I said, um, I started realizing that I would still have a lot of energy left at the end of the race. So it was not like I was completely blown because I never used to run fast. Even now, if you ask me, I don't kill myself on runs, even on training or events. I always enjoy having that energy even after. Um, I, I have always enjoyed uh, finishing strong instead of pushing myself really hard in the beginning and then probably coming and collapsing at the end and you like totally drained out of energy. So that was uh, something that from the initial stages that I used to enjoy because I never trained with a group as such. So I didn't have any pressure of time. Uh, so I used to run, enjoy, cheer people. That's how I started. So when I realized that I had more energy left at the end of the event and I saw what are the other distances available, then I thought, I'll let me scale up to a half marathon. So that's how I went to a trail and did my first half. And... Uh, I think 2000, so 2014, December is when I did my first 10K. And eight months later, I did my first half. And then I took about two years, did uh, scale down the events a little more. I think I was uh, trying to, I mean, probably started realizing that you don't need to do a lot of events. You can still do some training. But I even at that point, I was not really uh, training structurally. So I didn't have any workouts in my plan. I would just run. That's it. Uh, so in a week, I would uh, do two or three runs, 5Ks or 10Ks sometimes, and I would be happy about it. And because I was not pushing myself so much and I didn't have a mentor or a coach to tell me that um, probably you can train in this way and that will help you to remain injury-free or any of that. But um, fortunately, I've never been injured in the past five and a half years since I started running. Um, and... I totally give that uh, credit to the uh, point that I've never really pushed myself to try and do intervals or any of that. Uh, I mean, it was a very later stages that I heard about tempo runs or intervals or any of that. Because for me, running was just about tying your uh, laces, getting out and just running by feel. So that's how I started running. Do you, do you still uh, train with your own plans and uh, ideas, or do you have some mentor or coach uh, to guide you? Um, so I did try running with a group. Um, so I was with Runners 360, which is uh, run, run by Shreyas Karnat, for about three months uh, before I did my first full marathon. Um, but then I think I had got used to my own comfort zone of not really being pressurized with uh, plans or and then I realized I was very poor with following somebody else's instructions. Okay. Uh, so I so think... Yeah, I think your husband will have a tough time. And <laughs> <laughs> so, 
that's a different matter altogether. <laughs> I think we'll have to take another. Is call. he is he is he sitting off the camera and listening to the conversation? Because I saw him when you came on. <laughs> uh, he was uh, he's doing his stuff, so he's. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> so he doesn't know what you're saying. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so I did try uh, running with a group okay. and uh, try following what uh, usually is done by running groups. So you have interval runs and then you have um, some tempo runs, you have a long distance. So I did that for three months and then I realized, uh, I think by then I had gradually um, started figuring out that I had endurance and I didn't have speed. So that was something that, so even before I did my first full marathon, so um, I, I had done a lot of crazy stuff even before that. So uh, going back 20, I think I'd written down just to say, yeah, 2017, December, I had attempted an Olympic triathlon with uh, the CTC uh, event itself. So the Chennai Trail uh, Trekking Company. So they do this tri uh, triathlon, they used to. And uh, I didn't know how to swim at that point. But um, I had done my full marathon. And I decided that it's three events and it could be exciting. And I had always, you know, uh, I used to blame my dad for uh, not having uh, put me uh, into training for uh, being a swimmer as a child. And I had held on to that until that point. And then I realized, I mean, I can't really blame anybody else for what I don't know, any skill that I think is important, but I don't know. So I signed up for the Olympic triathlon and then one and a half months I trained and then went and did the event. <laughs> so, okay, I, I, that, it's this is interesting. Uh, when, when you say that somebody can run uh, as human beings, all of us can run without knowing how to run. But I never knew that somebody can swim without knowing how to swim. So how did you really pick up that skill in one and a half months? That looks um, very um, well, interesting. Uh, the thing is, all of us are buoyant, except for people who have very low muscular density. Uh, I mean, I have a friend who's being told that he is um, unfloatable <laughs> because his okay. muscular mass is very low. Other than that, everybody, all of us have a very strong instinct of survival, even in water. But even at this, even today, even after doing so, I did uh, do a full a half iron distance the next year. But even now, I'm still scared of what. <laughs> uh, the only saving grace was that that event had rope in the center. So it was a 300 meter open water swim in a query, which was like 40 kilometers away from Chennai. So you could rest. So that was the only thing that I had in mind when I signed up even without knowing how to swim. Uh, I think I would say this is a quality that my dad had taught me from a very young age that if you put your mind to something, you can really learn it. And as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. So um, I have always um, really appreciated the fact that you can have that quality and if you're pushed, uh, if I didn't have an event, then maybe I would have taken, say, six months to uh, gradually learn. But I mean, I would not advise anybody to sign up for a triathlon and not know yeah. how to swim now, because that was a very lenient event and uh, people were very helpful. So you could stop, you could hold the rope. Uh, so I would, I had learned how to swim, but I had no technique. I could just get from A to B, uh, take a short break for like uh, swim for 100 meters and then hold on to the rope, catch some breath and then think why did I actually do this and I was scared but then it happened. So uh, it, I think uh, that is something my dad always used to tell me also. Uh, so he used to actually uh, cycle beside me when I was in school and uh, make me run. And as a kid, I think I was in fifth or sixth standard. And he used to tell me, I would tell that I'm tired, I'm going to fall off and I would be so out of breath. And then he would say, okay, if you fall, then I will take you back home. Don't worry about it. Okay. So that was something which was very much imbibed in me. And even to, till date, I know our body is always responding in a way that you can still take control. And it is trying to actually protect us. So okay. that is something which I have realized. Okay. the endurance running inside the stadium. Um, so what 
really got your attention? Uh, why did you decide to do that event? Uh, I don't think the Tuffman was your first event, I guess. So you did uh, 12 hour uh, run before. Uh, so what, uh, what really caught your attention? Why did you decide to run that? And then where do you, how did you train? Uh, I know that I met you at the Eric Gorton's uh, session. At that time, I think you were, you were kind of uh, fine-tuning your, uh, your training and uh, also running a lot of mileage. Uh, so how did you really train for the event? And then on that day, did you know that you're going to break a national record? Tell us about that experience. Uh, so that was back in 2018. Uh, so I had done two uh, 50Ks, the Aircard Ultra and the Hindur Bamboo Ultra. So I had done two 50Ks and uh, I was at Kantirwa. I had just finished a run and uh, even before that, I had never run within the stadium tracks for more than I think 20 minutes. Because I, as I said, I used I just hate monotony and uh, even with other things that I do in like normally, even cooking, I don't like to repeat dishes even when I cook, like I need variety. So I was there and then I met Nagraj Anigasar, who was the founder of NEB. And um, I had a relationship with him as a friend from a couple of years. And then he asked me how things are and stuff like that, the normal things. And then he told me that uh, you've not run any of our events since one and a half or two years. I was like, sir, I'm getting bored of all the city runs. So I've gradually I'm trying to move into ultras and trails. Then he said, hey, we have a stadium run coming up in, I think it was three months down the line. I very casually told him that, so this is such a boring thing to do. I mean, I don't see, it's a big, I mean, it's very boring and I don't see as it as a big deal. <laughs> I, I think I was very uh, outright ridiculous in saying that. So he was taken aback and then he said, um, in, in Canada itself is a very casual thing. He said, oh, is it? Why don't you come run the event? I'll give you a complimentary entry and just uh, prove to yourself that it's easy. Um, so that's how I got into my first event. Okay. First, okay. So 2018 is when I did my first 12 last stadium run. So when I got into that and then he mailed me the entry, then I realized, okay, the, there's a new challenge now. Uh, why not train for it? So before that Vela Stadium run, I had done two, two hours each at the stadium itself, just to get used to the feeling. My uh, only aim was going into that event to be on the ground for 12 hours. So I had no other goals in mind. Uh, it was not anything to prove to him, but just that I wanted to see for myself because I think I was careless in passing that remark that it's very easy and it's too boring because there are uh, people who put in a lot of effort and who do really tremendous jobs on the stadium track. So uh, going into the event, I had no expectations other than being on the ground for 12 hours. So I went in, uh, my husband was there. So my husband has been my crew for all my stadium runs. He's always there for that whole 12 hour period, asking me what I want and stuff like that. So I did 50K. That was a distance I knew I could do because I had done them earlier, two of them. And I had put in some training. After 50K, I think every half an hour, 45 minutes, I would come off the track sit next to my husband and just look around and I didn't know how my body would respond. So I was just taking it very easy and I didn't have any aim. So it was, it was a very nice run and gradually I realized through the run that it's not as bad as I had presumed it to be. So that's how I got started. Uh, so this, uh, I mean, the national record that you're talking about is this year, Feb 2020. Uh, so after that, I did four more stadium runs, one at Delhi and then Tuffman at Chandigarh. Uh, then I came back. So uh, it was again Nagraj Anikasur. So I think the first stadium run that I did was I had covered about 86 kilometers. Uh, taking like, I had had my breakfast, lunch and the snacks which were given. I never really realized that uh, probably you don't need so much fuel or anything. I had no idea about stadium runs and fueling and nutrition, all that. Uh, so through those uh, two years time that I've done stadium runs and learned, uh, the latest one that I did at uh, Chandigarh, by then I had 
fairly realize that you, we don't need so much fuel as much as we think. So I could do that without eating any solid food, uh, but I'm not into gels or anything. So I use my own energy drink, homemade energy drink with jaggery and a couple of other ingredients. And um, I think other than a couple of toilet break, breaks that I took, I was just on the ground and I was running. By then, um, running in circles was more mental is what I had realized than physical aspect. Oh, okay. That's all? Okay. Um, <laughs> you ran 112 kilometers. Um, I can actually relate to that because I've done a couple of 12-level stadium runs once uh, back in 2016. Uh, again, the NEB event uh, for, uh, of course, I was doing the 42-week campaign. I decided to do two full marathon distance within that 12-hour time. And then one event in Chennai uh, under blazing sun, 38 <laughs> degrees, did some 87 yeah. kilometers. So it's it's insane, it's crazy, but you know, running Hanan's 12 kilometers in 12 hours is absolutely, uh, you know, it requires a lot of uh, determination and uh, focus. And I, I have a great admiration for women athletes in general, because the day I learned that uh, women uh, in general have got much more enduring capabilities, you know, the endurance game, they do much better, you know, because their pain tolerance is much higher than men. Uh, so uh, my respect for women certainly multiplied. And uh, now, did you, at any point in time, did you kind of go back to your conversation that you had with Nagaraj and say that this is the absolute stupid thing that I've, I'm doing? Did, at any point in time, did you think about that? Or you were like super focused, you are like the textbook girl uh, who wanted to finish and uh, the goal was right in front of you and all those, you know, theoretical definition of an ideal runner. Uh, during the run, I never spoke to uh, Adiga sir at all because I was just, uh, I think, um, somewhere I had taken it as a question of ego, <laughs> probably, and I wanted to uh, prove to myself and indirectly prove to him that, you know, if you actually put your uh, work, then it's possible. It's not as hard. But then um, he was the person that I would say who seeded that thought in my head that, uh, so after I finished the event, he came, pat my back and he said, well done. You know, you should aim for 100K now. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing that he said. He said, there's an event in uh, Delhi, which is happening in December. Start training from now. You do the 100K, I'm going to take you to the national team. That's what he told me at that point. So but till then, I never knew that... Um, you could actually represent India and qualify for the okay. world championships mm -hmm. or any of that. Uh, so December 2018 is when that, uh, I mean, you know, growing up and when you are encouraged at home for uh, being active in sports with hockey or any of the other sports that I used to play, it's always an, anyone's dream for uh, being able to have the uh, India uh, tag on your t-shirt and being able to represent the country. So I think that was one thing that uh, started driving me uh, to train better and uh, uh, that became my goal so since then so since the past one and a half years i started focusing on endurance runs so i've um, so my training strategy was just simple uh, just run longer distances for duration runs so i have never really focused on doing a lot of intervals i've never run intervals very bad at it but uh, because I never saw the uh, saw how that would help me for my endurance runs for longer than even if, if the run is longer than say uh, six hours or seven hours or eight hours in that point I would never be able to run a four minute kilometer or a five minute kilometer so I never saw the relevance of that in my mm -hmm. training mm -hmm. so that's how I molded my own training to fit my 